Okay, so now let's have a quick review of what we've done so far, okay? We have created a folder called scheduling. And really, I put this on my desktop, but you'll probably want to put it somewhere where it ends up permanently. Because when we start to uh, make paths between Access and Excel, it needs to know exactly where those files are and that sort of thing. And we can't be moving around this folder. But anyhow, for demonstration, I put it here. We created a folder. Inside that folder, we created a spreadsheet called Scheduling. That spreadsheet has a tab called Substrates, another one Dies, Structure, and Orders. We could have more things like analogs, ink formulas, and all sorts of things, but we're not going to go into that right now. Substrate has its headers and information, and so do Dies and Structure and Orders. Okay? So we created that spreadsheet. Then we went to Access, created an, an Access database uh, where we linked to the dies, orders, structure, and substrates uh, tables or uh, sheets in that Excel spreadsheet called Scheduling. And then finally we went to the queries and we created a query that pulls out the uh, by order number pulls out all of this information associated with a given order if you put in the number of the order the SKU the quantity and the due date it's gonna pull out all of this information right here okay now the beauty of that is that we can now use this query and export it to the same spreadsheet that we have a scheduling here so let's Let's do that real quick and see what that looks like. So I'm going to write a macro. And uh, we are going to transfer a spreadsheet, right? So the transfer type is export. The spreadsheet type is Excel. The table name is the query that we're going to be exporting. So it's work orders. The file name is where we're exporting it to, and we need the whole path. So we'll go to that folder. And the neat thing about uh, this is if I create a shortcut and I then look at the properties of that shortcut, it, or it has the path as the target. So I just have to hit Control C to uh, copy that path and put it over here in the file name so you see it that I just got that that was an easy way for me to get the path to that has field names yes okay so so we'll export and we're not going to uh, put a range there because that way everything comes out alright so we're gonna save this macro when we're going to call it export new orders okay now and when we run this macro you watch when we open the scheduling spreadsheet we now have a tab called work orders and everything came out to this spreadsheet isn't that just pretty I love it I love it man alright so now we have a way to export work orders very quickly right from a simple system now I'm going to set these things up so that we could do a little export and sh give you a little bit better idea of what we can do with this thing now okay so I'm going to create multiple IDs of substrates. I'm going to create multiple IDs of dies, structures, multiple orders, and we're going to see what happens to this work orders thing, okay? Okay, so here's what I did. I went to substrates and I just created a bunch of make-believe stuff. Substrate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down through S12362. Some of it's white, some of it's yellow, and I just made a bunch of different widths, all right? It's not important other than that you see they're, they're different, right? So those are the substrates I have in my shop. That's what I have to work with, let's say. These are my dies, okay? They're, they happen to be in sequence, and they're, I, you see all this is the same? I didn't care about that. I got tired of making stuff up. So I just put some squares, rectangles, and circles, changed the teeth a little bit, but the rest of it, I just left it alone, and we're going to disregard anything that uh, happens as a result of that, okay? The structures. 
in my system I have 10 products okay they are SKUL 0000001 through 10 I'm, I'm just new in this business I've got a few customers and uh, they the, between them all of those SKUs then the substrates they use a few different substrates and they all use the same feet per label these are the inks each one of those products use and, and, the, and the analogs each one of those products use okay and we use for those products the rates for each one of those products and the dyes for each one of those products okay so these are the product structures these are what goes into making these products these are the orders okay so what happened I have a young person up front who takes orders for us right so right now we've got 10 orders on the books okay what in the world go away um, we have 10 orders on the books these are their SKUs these are the quantities and these are the due dates okay so when a new order comes in my friend up there just does one three three and maybe the SKU again is L zero 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 five let's say right and they want fifty thousand of that and the due date is six twenty okay that's all they have to do up front because we have everything else set up behind the scenes so now right now these are the only work orders we have out here remember we exported that the one line but let's see what happens we're gonna save this spreadsheet now that we have new orders and we have all this data behind the scenes right our table set up let's see what happens uh, when we go to uh, access okay so now remember that query that gave us our work orders right let's see what happens when we run that and look what happened we have a bunch of orders folks isn't that cool so now what happens right well let's see what happens when we go to that macro we created that transfers the spreadsheet and we run that now let's go to Excel and see what it looks like look what happened to the work orders we got all our work orders out here right isn't that pretty don't you love that alright let me save that now here's what's cool I've got all these work orders in front of me right and uh, I can sort these things in Excel in ways that I couldn't other places let's say that I want to group everything by uh, customer okay I can do a sort data sort and by customer and now I've grouped all my customer orders together right and maybe I only run these on press 1 and I only run these on press 2 right so we'll come down here and we'll create uh, we'll insert a worksheet we'll insert another one and we'll name this one uh, oops cancel that rename that uh, press one right rename that press two right so now these are our work orders we're gonna take these here that we only run on press one cut those insert them on press one okay and then we'll take uh, these and we'll cut these and we'll insert them on press two okay but now we want to know what we've got here so we'll copy this header and we'll insert that there and we'll copy it again and we'll insert on top of that so now we've created schedule for two presses right so on press one we have order number 126 130 124 128 132 and we've got a few orders on this press right and we can go on and <clears throat> excuse me we can go on and sort them other ways and we can format these columns so that everything fits more pretty right so now look at that now we've got ourselves a little bit of uh, uh, easy schedules to look at that we can arrange things and everything right so we save that now but here's the thing now that I have these schedules on these order I don't want them to come out again okay but you see I've got nothing on the work order schedule 
Let me close that. Let me run that macro again. Let me open that again. And you see all the orders came out again, right? Well, I don't want to have to deal with that and say, hey, what's on press 1 and what's on press 2? So I've got to modify my query a little bit so these orders don't come out, okay? So let's do that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to link press 1 and press 2 to this database so that this database can see press 1 and press 2 and know, you know, what's on the schedule. All right? Only by seeing and knowing what's on the schedule will it know what not to what not to allow, right? So now we got press 1 and we've got press 2 linked. Okay, great. So now we can go to our query. We can modify it by bringing in press 1 and press 2, right? And associating them by the numbers, because that's what we're looking at. And uh, there's a special type of join that we want here. Remember, I'm not teaching you guys this stuff. I'm just showing you guys this stuff so you can get motivated enough to teach yourself this stuff and make it. All right. And so we're going to say, okay, press number one. That number is no. Right? And we're going to say the same thing with press number two. The number is no. It's not on press number one schedule and it's not on press number two schedule. Let's save that. We should have nothing. Come on now. Right. We have one. Hmm. 131. That must be missing. That's cool. So what we'll do is we'll export that. We'll go to the macro and we'll export that new order. And what should happen is that should be the only one that's on the new work order schedule. And it is. And that one will cut. That's XYZ bottling. Who gets that? Press 2 gets that. So we'll insert that there. See, now that it's no longer missing, we should be able to go to that query. And we should see nothing. Yep, you see? Nothing to export because it's now on the schedule. However, if we go to the schedule, and let's say we remove 128 and 132 from the schedule, right? Well, that should get exported by access because it thinks it's missing, right? Indeed, there they are, right? So when we run this macro and uh, we export it, we should have those two orders there. And here, and there they are. And wherever dog food which guys get that okay that goes to press one so we'll put those back on press one whoops we'll cut it we'll insert it on press one insert cut cells and now because it's on press one it should not come out here the next time right so we'll go back here and look at the query and indeed there's nothing on there so you get it any order that's removed from the schedule will be get replaced so now orders whoops Okay, it's running that query, so it wouldn't let me do that. Okay. All right, so now we have a little schedule machine, right? We can have somebody put, let's say, order number 555 here, right? For L, for L, whoops, not here. Sorry. On the orders. So let's say somebody puts order number 555. And the product is L, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Two and it's ten thousand and seven one is the due date, right? That should be a new order that should end up coming out out here for me to put on the schedule, correct? So we're gonna run this macro real quick and then we're gonna go back to that schedule and voila, there it is. Now, order number 555 is ready to go on um, press one. See? Now, okay, so that's one bit of this process, okay? There is all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. I mean, it's just mind-boggling, okay? 
Uh, and I'm not going to go into that right now. I think I'm going to leave it here for now. Except, let's see if we play around a little bit more. Okay, let's see if we make a real work order. Okay, let's see if we make a real work order. Uh, nope, we're not going to do it. That's it. I quit for now. All right, guys. So, so what have we done here? We've created a real easy way that if we, um, you know, if we just set ourselves up with a few tables that we should have anyway, we should know what kind of substrates we have, what kind of dyes we have, what our structures are, you know, and, uh, you know, what our analogs is. We should have an, an ink list and all that. Okay. Um, uh, we put things in Excel and we can do things with access and we can really make some really cool custom stuff. And so that's it. See you next time.